it's a slow process, so I'm excited for this. So, I well, one thing I want to address, I, I, I try not to tag too many people. I don't know if people get annoyed by that. But at the same time, it's, it's just whatever. Um, that's one. And then two, I've announced it on my page, but I might as well just address it now. So, I had a separate page for the podcast, and then that was my poetry page, but... You know, it was just basically too much to deal with where it was just managing both pages. And, you know, I have more followers on this on my main page than I did on that page. And just trying to engage is very difficult. So that's why I de- decided to delete the podcast page on Instagram and just do everything on my main page, which is at the Andy Morales. And yeah, we'll just take it from there, you know. And yes, I did announce it. And I'll announce it again. I am proud. I am happy to announce that this podcast is expanding. You know, in case you didn't hear the news. Oh, well, it's not news, but you know, in case you didn't know, um, the platforms have extended. You know, I know I said in the past it's av- um This podcast is available on Apple, Google. Spotify and Anchor, of course, that's the source that it comes from, but you guys should listen to it on Anchor.fm as well. But I'm also proud to announce that now the podcast can be heard on Amazon Music and it can also be heard now on iHeartRadio. So that is exciting as I slowly transition. And I've had people ask me if I was going to do one on YouTube. Um, I might, it, it all depends. Um, I got to see how that works. I don't know if I have to just upload every single thing or if I just have to do how I did the other ones, but let, let's see what happens. But in the meantime, um, I'm excited because I want to expand as much as possible. So it's not just within the Instagram bubble. Um, you know, it's a slow process, but I am going to be going outside of the Instagram because I do want a lot of us to listen to it. And there's people who don't even know about this community, but I'm pretty sure we'll come across this podcast and be like, oh, what's this? And then listen to it, and then they're going to want to know what's going on. But, you know, I, I, just so you know, it's not going to just focus only on poetry. Rather, it's going to just be different walks of life. And I'm excited for this. Um, I do have some episodes coming up as far as having some more guests over. And also, I wanted to do a topic episode. So, um, I did put out a survey a couple of days ago. And, you know, it's not a story anymore. But I decided I'm going to do both. The the question was, should I do a question? I mean, should I do, like, a post topic? People, you know, put up the comments and I respond to the comments. Or do a live and, like, open mic style and do... Our audience participation, but it seems like the votes were very mutual. So I decided I'm gonna do both. I'll do like a part one and a part two, or whatever the case is. When it depends on how it all panders out, I guess. So that's what I'm excited for. So I do have some guests coming up soon that I'm excited to have up soon. So I'm just waiting for responses. And yeah, so I'm gonna be reading some pieces. Keep it short and sweet. And yeah. So the first piece I'm going to read. It is by B. Allen Hart. It's Brett Allen Hart. And he's one of those people that I've had the honor and privilege of getting to know. He is somebody that when I read his pieces, I get inspired a lot. I have maybe three pieces that I have written that was inspired by pieces he wrote. So the piece I'm going to read is a piece from his book, Misguided Journey. He actually has three books. All of his books are available on Amazon.com. And the three books he has is A Garden Once Lush, 
Hopelessly Hoping, which is a novel, and Misguided Journey. And they are available on Kindle and paperback format. Um, it's very interesting um, because this book that I'm reading from, I have the digital version. But I also found out that this particular book is out of print. So now it's just a limited availability. If you don't know who he is, definitely follow this brother right here. I'm excited. And yeah, so we'll just take it from there. So the piece I'm going to read is from his book, Misguided Journey. And this is a piece that I really like a lot. And I'm going to read it. So it goes like this. Regrets have come to destroy me. While the weight of chances not taken slowly breaks me. I suffocate as words unspoken choke me. Choices not made deliver a killing blow, smothering my once joyful heart. Wow. Damn. Like, this is what I'm saying. And, bro, like, I, I, I can say this. Regrets are, you know what's interesting about regrets? I used to believe, or I used to tell myself, that I don't regret nothing because if I had regrets, then I wouldn't be the person I am today. And you know what? I used to think like that, but then as I've come to the Lord, as i gotten married, and I have, you know, I have a child now, I've realized that that way of thinking is not always good, at least for me. You don't have to agree with me, but... For me, that's what it is. Because the thing is, right, I feel like it's okay to have regrets. It's just don't let the regrets consume you. And this piece is a perfect example of the regret trying to consume you, have hold of you, to trap you so you're not able to carry on, to move on, to, to actually move forward into the life that, well, in my case, you know, that God has built for me or for you or for a lot of us, right? And there's certain regrets that I, uh, I kind of regret telling this guy that, <laughs> fine, whatever. But I'm talking about the real, real heavy regrets. The regrets that, like, like I'll give you an example. And I never really talked about this. But when I was in, you know, before I came to the Lord, I was in a two-year relationship with my second girlfriend. And long story short, blah, 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 she cheated on me, yada, yada. So when I was trying to reconcile with her and maybe take her back because, of, hey, maybe I was a little bit hard on her. You know, I mean, there's no excuse for cheating, but I feel like everybody deserves a second chance. Let's just put it this way. The, the, the situation got so bad, so heated, so ridiculous that it, it was just a lot of bashing of words. And one thing I said, and it got this point to a fact that I went through her mother because she refused to just see me face to face, whatever. And it's, you know, whatever, it's just a whole thing. And I said tons of obscene things to her. I said a lot of crap. I have cursed at her, I've rebuked her, I've yelled, I've cried, I've threatened, I've even said things like, I hope she dies in a car act, like, I have said some things that, you know, I'm like, yo, I look back now, I'm like, I can't believe I even said that, I even went to that point, <laughs> but... At the same time, although I understood, okay, I was hurt. I didn't really, my, my, you know, when you're in your emotions, you don't really understand. But then, you know, we, we don't think before we act, basically, right? So, I, this is years ago, right? So, I look back now, and there's been times, even in my, you know, when I was still single, that that thought would come to mind, like, oh my god, like, like, I would legit look her mom up on Facebook, and it's so interesting, I have never seen any pictures of my ex, 
let them say that they bring you with the yeah, it's your mom, you know, take pictures of your, you know, your daughter or whatever, have fun, blah, blah. And I don't see anything. It's like as if she disappeared and vanished from the safety of the earth. And, you know, uh, and I'll be honest, I have reached out and said, hey, hope is good. I just want to say I'm sorry about everything. You know, um, please understand, just wasn't in a good place and I regret it. You know, because I do. I actually regret that. I regret doing that. I regret saying that. Because I wouldn't really want to wish something bad for somebody. And I actually did that. Which is why I'm like, oh, why did I do that? So anyway. With that being said, I, I have reached out. I have gotten no response. And very right so, she shouldn't have to respond to me. But I wonder, like, oh, my God, I hope, like, I didn't put it out there type thing. And then, you know, because the worst thing you can ever do is just, you know, say some stuff and then, oh, my God, it's going to bite you in the butt. Like, that's the worst thing you can do. And this is why... This piece, this piece really took me back to that point in my life where I'm just like, yo. And I've looked at other situations like, okay, have I said anything worse than that? I regret another thing, too, where with my first girlfriend, long story short, blah, blah, blah. We broke up, didn't work out, all right, whatever, yada, yada, yada. It's just the hack. This is the fact that after we broke up, you know, basically, I will always go back to her. Because it's all I knew was her. And, you know, we did stuff, basically. And I, I'm not going to say I led her odd. It was more like there was that somewhat of a belief that it's a possibility that maybe we can get back together type thing. And, yeah, has it crossed my mind in the past? Yes, it has. No, not now, obviously, because I'm married. No, of course not. But, I mean, you know, I, in, when, I was sing, well, when I was single. And it's crossed my mind, you know. But then I realized I've had friends that would tell me, uh, my best friend that I haven't spoken to in so, many, in so long, that he was like, you know, don't do that. It's, it's, it's crazy, like. Dude, you're only going back because you're lonely type thing. And it's true because I think if I did take her back and actually um, were to have gotten back together with her, it really would not have worked out. Because, and that's happened before where I did get back with her maybe two or three years after we broke up. That, you know, I tried it and I, I just really wasn't feeling it. And it, it just looked very familiar. Of, wait, this is starting to become kind of like, okay, I think this is going back to where this was again. And certain patterns were repeating itself. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't know. And then I remember having a friend in college who kind of talked me out of it. And I ended up breaking up with her. And this time it was just like, you know what, maybe it's just best. No, we went too fast or whatever. And, you know, maybe see a different perspective of the situation. And that's the reality of it, you know. But do I regret all that? Yeah, because, you know, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit immature in my walk of life, in life. So I, I don't know. And then even after years later and I came to the things of God and stuff like that, yeah, you know, I was still doing things I wasn't supposed to be doing. And I remember God would convict me and... God would just legitimately, really, really, really just, you know, man, like, I don't even know where to begin with that, but I, I regret that because I know deep down inside, that's not me. I'm not really that person, you know, so again, it, it did bring me back to some places in my life that I didn't think I could ever revisit, but it's interesting because... It's such a short piece and something so short could speak in so much volume. And that's what I believe makes a great piece. Sometimes just a little line like that. I, I really enjoyed this piece so much. And that is by at B. Allen Hart. Definitely check him out. And yeah. So thank you for the inspiration. Thank you for your words, brother.
So the next piece I'm going to read is by a poet who goes by the handle of at Brandon White Music and Poetry. He is a musician. He is a poet. He is a writer. He is, and if you don't know who that is, definitely follow that man right there. He is the kind of guy that you have to pay attention to detail. You can't miss nothing when he speaks, you know, and I've said this many times before. I do have his book that I purchased. It came out March 1st, 2020. And if you want to hear more about where the inspiration comes from the book, you can actually look back in season one of this podcast where he was actually a guest on my sh- podcast. And we talked about his life, his 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 upbringing. We talked about the book. And the book had came out a couple of weeks later, I believe. And we did it the weeks prior. So, again, this, this, this um, brother right here is, is amazing with his words. And I am honored and privileged to have met this man. You know, he's from Arkansas, and I live in... Um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and I live in Bayonne, New Jersey. <laughs> Out of all places. But anywho, so the piece I'm going to read is a piece that he actually tagged me in recently. And I actually want to read it. You know, um, again, I, I really appreciate this man. And I hope you enjoy it. So if you're not following him, definitely follow this man. So there's no title to this piece. So it goes like this. My simple frozen world lays dreaming of the sun. While tires search for a fault beneath the ice craving friction. A little momentum, a little heat, something familiar. I'm slipping and sliding and thinking of how you left no trace. How you passed through my life like a dream. When I should be focusing on the road. I love this. And if you see see cuz you have to see the actual imagery, the 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 of this piece and the picture he had, but it it, it, it the picture matches the words. The words they, they they match with each other. It describes exactly what this is. So, what I enjoy about this is basically this. So, the way this piece spoke to me, I will say this, that I took it as when you meet a friend, for just that momentary moment of of time, only for a little bit, and then they just go away. Because one thing I've realized about life is that, you know, they call it, I, I call it seasons, People call it a phase, whatever. So there's certain seasons of my life that I have met some people, but they were only met for that season. And then they disappear. And I never see them again. But it's interesting because it's like they left nothing behind. They left no trace. Right? But certain people... And I don't want to talk about just friendship, but I'll say this. You know, and this did kind of take me back to my dot, uh, my my father a little bit because my father passed away back in 2018, and it's interesting because there's been times where I would walk. I don't I don't drive, but there's times I walk around and my mind just zones into this thing, and it's like, you know, the moments are there, but I should be focused on what's in front of me. Right, I took it as well. I have to keep moving forward. So if this is the road, the road that's ahead of me is what I need to focus on, because if I stay in one spot and look back at something that isn't there anymore, then I'm not growing. I'm not moving on or moving forward. I'm not keeping my eyes where it needs to be because I take that as life where. I need to be present, right? Because a little momentum, a little heat, something familiar, right? So a little momentum. Well, a little momentum. Well, there's a, there's a, there's a, I guess a little shift, I guess if you can say, right? There's a, see, because momentum is, is, is like, okay, I got something here. Oh, snap, let's go. Like, you know, like the car. 
spinning. Okay, I got momentum. Can I can I can I turn the wheels and I can just start driving again, right? Because you know, when 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 there's ice outside, it's actually black ice, and you can't drive out of that parking spot. That's like the worst feeling ever. Because my I've seen my sister. <laughs> I remember one time I was trying to help my sister unpark her car. It was just so funny. But anyway, so I got the momentum. I got the situation somewhat situated where now okay, and then a little heat. Okay, a little heat. Now there's 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 okay, there's some some kind of progress, something familiar. This is something familiar because I got the momentum, I'm shifting, the atmosphere is somewhat hopeful. But then there's a little heat. Okay, there, there, there's this okay, it, it's getting warmer, it's getting warmer. I can get there. It's a little familiar. I think I think I've got this. But then what happens when nothing happens? What happens when the people pass by your life and it is like a dream because with my ex-girlfriend, my first and second girlfriend, uh, both my girlfriends, like they passed my life. It felt like as if it was legit just a dream because now when I think about him, it's like it really was just a memory. It was legit just that. Like, it didn't seem real anymore. And sometimes the reality... I, I, I don't know if what I'm saying about how to speak uh, peace spoke to me even makes sense. But the way it spoke to me in that way, it was just kind of like... People pass by, they come and they go out of your life, and some people you reconnect, some people you don't see again. And it's interesting, right? Because the first line where it says, My simple frozen world lays dream of the sun. I'm sorry, the second line where it says, While the tires searches, I'm sorry, while tires search for a fault beneath the ice, craving friction, right? I took that as. I'm trying my best to find my footing where I'm at. I'm trying to find my footing. It's like when you go scuba diving. And before you can go scuba diving, you have to go onto the water and find your footing so you can find balance. So the friction part makes sense because, you know, you need some kind of solidness foundation so you can actually start moving. So like a car, if there's no... You know, because the friction, it's weird, right? Because friction can go in so many directions. But there's one aspect where it's just slippery. But then there's the other aspect where once I catch some kind of friction where it can grab onto something and the tire can actually start making the move, right? If that makes sense. I'm thinking about laws of physics here. I think I'm going too off a little bit. But, you know... It's interesting, though, how life can just... I don't know. Life speaks in so many ways, you know? Um, I had to think about this one a little bit because cause I feel like my mind is racing and it's just like... I don't know. It's interesting with this piece. But I love when a piece can make me think like that. See, because... What I originally had in mind before I started recording was not, not even close to what I'm saying now. And I don't even know if anything I said made sense, to be honest with you. I don't know if it made sense. I don't know if it was even understood. But I was just dissecting because I love dissecting pieces. And I love inviting people into my mind. This is what I think sometimes. And it's cool because, um, again, I love when a piece can really speak to me in that way. You know, I don't know if it makes sense, but brother, thank you for sh tagging me in this piece. All right, so the next piece I'm going to read, it is uh, someone I've read out loud for the first time, right? So this is a brother that I've had the opportunity and the honor of speaking to, getting to know um, this brother right here, his name is Leon Jones, who goes by the handle of Living Canvas, I'm sorry, Living Canvas 84 underscore. So this brother is also a man of God, just like I am. 
And when we have conversations, God moves in such profound ways. Uh, he has a way of speaking. He's not afraid to be himself. He's not afraid to speak transparently. And this is a piece that he had tagged me in. And I'm, you know, I'm honored to read this piece. You know, so the title of this piece is called Virtual Slaves. And it goes like this. Censor, canceled, silenced, and watched. Expression of freedom, handcuffed. Liberty is superficial, and the job has been botched. Silicon Valley, they call it, and we're all in their pockets. Knowledge is power. That's why your identity makes them profit. Advertising, blinding, and hypnotizing, giving you just what you thought, like their profits. Alas, the devil comes to bring our greedy pleasures, but not give our soul solace. We're credited and indebted. We continue to gaze with the glaze. Trapped behind a screen, entertained, while trapped as a slave in the matrix seems. Virtual servitude, ownership of your being. Time is of the essence, and these cannibals are stripping us clean. That which we thought we are and need. We're all bare naked to their eye, and like drug fiends. Reality seems boring. I need my virtual feed. As they feed, eating away at our souls, they succeed. We're depressed, but won't take head. We become slaves and don't want to be free. Jesus Christ. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, I don't know... What to say about this? It's just as I'm legit reading this, it's a lot of exposure to the reality that's literally right in front of us. And shucks, shucks. Um, Leon, if you're listening. Uh, thank you so much for writing this piece and trusting me enough, you know, to tag me in and stuff like that. Um, I believe everything you're saying in this piece is spot on. It is exactly to the point. It is exactly technically what it is, right? Because put it this way. How many of us get more attached or how many of us rely on the internet? The, like basically behind the screen, peop, like, like, like the feed. It's interesting because I took it as it's not just the likes, but it's just the fact that I can get a comment or two and people are actually paying attention to me like... If I were to go out in the real world and go to a bar or a lounge or just hang out and talk to a random person, hey, what do you think of this piece? Like, you really think people could get to know each other in that way in a community? I don't think so. Like, right? There's so many directions you can take this piece in. And it's, it's, wow. Brother, man, um... Censorship is a real thing, and unfortunately, it is getting to that point where everybody wants to shut everybody up. And I'm not going to be one of those people, no, I'm going to stand for my rights. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying, like, people have become so ridiculously sensitive where we legit have to... Watch what we say. This is the snowflake generation. Like, oh my god, you can't say that. Oh my god, why would you say that? And there's just some things that it's just, okay, it's the fucking blunt truth and you can't handle it. 
like it's it's insane. Um wow. Leon, wow. <laughs> I give you a standing ovation if you can see me. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, man, for being real. Not a lot of people like you in this world, man. We need more of you. And I really mean that, bro, from the bottom of my heart. I mean, we, we need more people like you, man. And, and thank you so much for your realness and your rawness, my friend. So, the next and final poet I'm going to read, she goes by the name of Stephanie Lamb. And she just came out with a book this year, I believe it was this year, called Vermal Vomit and Other Poetry and Prose. Um, this, um, well, if you get the Kindle version, which I have, you know, it's, um, it's free. If you get the paperback, it's $10.99. I think it's $10.99. So, I knew of her because um, one of my good friends, Natalie Serna, who I've read in the first um, episode of the season. Um, she goes by the handle of Silent Lover. She, um, I gotta stop saying um a lot. I'm so sorry. Sorry, I, I lost my train of thought for a second. No, yeah, so she, she always went live with her. She's actually... Good friends with Natalie. Um, and, and I've actually gotten the honor and privilege to be a part of a prompt that they did together. Uh, she had took some time off. And me and Natalie did a live together with the prompt when Mars was ours. And it was such an honor to be a part of that. Um, I did write a piece for that prompt as well. And yeah. So, the title of this piece I'm going to read from Stephanie, it is called Warning Sign. I have been through too much hell, not to be made a fire and brimstone. Yet, I am a realist who loves to dream. I conquer demons and call them each by name. He dealt the cards, and I still be Satan at his own game. I suffer molten lava. And knock the devil off his throne. Even so, the things I touch do not turn to gold. They fall apart, withered, and torn. Listen, my darling. Let me read to you my warning signs. Body of a goddess. Heart of an angel. Mind of a sultry sinner. And least we forget... I am a good fuck. I will fuck you out of your good intentions and sound reason. I will fuck your sanity and logic in Tamden. I will fuck you out of your self-worth and dignity. Listen and pay attention, my darling. I'm trying to show you my warning signs. You cannot shinnel a rose from my granite heart. Same as I built you up, I will tear you apart. There is no filter between my tongue and cheek. I will slice you to pieces with my lyrical shiv. Twelve millimeter incision, you will not feel a thing. Open your sores and leave your darkest fears exposed. Until you have bled out and it is time for your soul to be disposed. In the end, don't you dare point blame. You were a willing participant in this game. After all, I've tried to protect you, my darling. But you absolutely refuse to read my warning sign. Wow. Um, holy crap. Damn. Talk about rawness here. Um, wow. Uh, yes, I just hit my head. My forehead. Um, wow. Oh, God. Oh, man. You know what's crazy? As I'm reading this piece... I didn't see this as 
she's telling, literally telling the person the story. It's rather the body language, the action, the moment. She's telling this person, her darling, this, not even the actual words. Um, I, I, like, just, and I think the title of this piece is just, it's exactly appropriate, warning sign. It's appropriate, right? Because all I got to do is give you signals, do certain things, and, and, and are you, uh, not are you, but do you have a eye of detail? Because eye of detail is, is very important. I'm trying to warn you, but once we get into this situation or relationship or this friendship or whatever this is, don't say I didn't warn you. And I didn't have to verbally tell you anything. That's the way I took this piece. But what really, 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 the first stanza where it says... I conquered demons and called them each by name. I dealt the cards. And I still beat Satan at his own game. Yo. That. Those two lines really like wow. Because if I can bring it into a godly standpoint with this. I believe we are called as people of Christ. Like, if you don't know what this is, call it by name. If you know what it is, call it by its name. Biblically speaking, Luke 10, 19 in the Bible has a verse that says that God has given us the authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and nothing shall hurt us, right? What does that mean? Because serpents and scorpions... Are smaller than us. They're at ground level. So I take that as. The area of attack. Should always be ground level. It should always be beneath my feet. Towards the ground. That's the area of attack. They say the devil should always be beneath your feet. And I, I believe this. With the, I, I don't know if this is what she was talking about here. But I will say this that. How she's conquered demons and call them each by name. She's like, like she's the way I took that as okay. Well, I have the authority through the blood of Jesus, through Jesus, to do the same, right? Because demons, you know, don't have authority over us unless we allow them to have authority over us, right? They don't have control of us unless I have allowed them to have control over us. And the thing is, right, in my walk with the Lord, it's through God that I am able to, like, God gives us the strategy to defeat Satan as his own game, if that makes sense, right? It's strategy, deliverance, and all this stuff. But what I'm saying is, when something's off, or something doesn't make sense, or something is like, okay, there's something going on here. You call the thing by its name. Call it by its name. Expose it. And it, I don't know. That that really caught my... And that's what it is. That a lot of us born again Christians. I guess you can say. Don't... Like we, we forget. If we have the authority to do these things. Because God's given us dominion. Basically. We have dominion to do that. You know, because we have the willpower, we have, you know, we have it in us to do these things. I'm going to call you by your name, I'm going to expose you for who you are, and I'm going to beat you at your own game. And I love that. Now, as far as the context of the pieces, you know, she's introducing herself. In this, in this, in this moment that she's about to have with this person, right? Because he said, "Yeah, I've been. I'm telling you a little bit of my story. I'm telling you who I am. I've told you what I've been through. I've telling you what I've done. 
And I'm admitting that, hey, not everything that I touch turns to gold. What does that mean? Not everything that I put my hands on or I deal with is always going to be flowers and blossoms. It's not always going to be like that. Sometimes they fall apart. Sometimes it's just gets out of control. But listen to me with everything I'm going to tell you. And I'm not going to just tell you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to warn you before anything else happens. And the second stanza is basically, you know, okay, this is what it is. This is what I'm all about. This is who I am. This is how I am as a person. And I'm not perfect. I will never be perfect. But this is my, this is just part of who I am. And I have all these good qualities. I have all these bad qualities. But this is the realest that it's going to get between you and me. Whether it's a friendship, relationship, whatever. But again, I like how she says, listen and pay attention, my darling. I am trying to show you my warning sign. I'm showing you. I'm trying to show you. And I love that. And then in the last stanza, she's continuing on. But she's also being more blunt, right? Because I say, hey, look, there's no, there's no, there's no filter in my words. Like, if you have sores, open them up to me. Basically, the way I took it as, I'll let you in if you let me in. Because you can't let me in. I can't let you in if you're not one to meet me halfway and let me in as well, right? It's so funny because... With my first, I mean, I'm sorry, my second girlfriend, she used to say, let me in, let me in. And I never really understood that until now. Until after we broke up. And I'm like, oh, let you in. Okay. You want me to trust you enough that when, I, when you trust me and I trust you, that somehow through some form of intimacy, we're going to be on some kind of level that... Am I going to enjoy everything that's there? Maybe, am I going to like what I see? No, but you might not like what you see. But maybe that's okay because that's what intimacy really is. This is what true realness and rawness really is. But you can't get mad at me. Check this out. You can't get mad at me if you get offended later or if you start feeling some type of way later on. You cannot get mad at me. You cannot get pissed off at me because I warned you. Don't bl don't point blame at me. I told you. I warned you from the beginning that this is what might happen. And you might not endure the exact situations that others have endured. But maybe that might be similar. But I have gave you warnings. I, I, I've I warned you. I've told you. I've made it very clear as day. That look, and whatever we have together, whether it's a, a friendship or whatever, it's not going to be blossom, flowers, candy land. It ain't going to be like that. And, and, and this is the this is the reality of this. Because you were willing to be part of this thing with me in the first place. You can't take it personal. You will not take it personal. But the problem is, right, we go through this and kind of like we dismiss the signs. We dismiss certain things because we like what we're enjoying, but sometimes I don't think we truly, especially us men, don't truly understand the possibilities and the responsibilities and the the under just the aspect of what that is. I'll put it in, in a different context. How about you want a house and you do whatever it is to get a house, but you don't understand what it is to have a house, to 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 buy a house. To understand the responsibilities and the maintenance to have the house. I live in a house now. 
and the responsibility, the maintenance, the, the, the. Make sure your bills are paid on time because now there's water bills, there's electric bill, there's light bill, there's, um, I think light and electricity is the same thing. There's the, the heat, you know, the gas, whatever you want to call it. And then maintaining the roof, maintaining the walls, because whoever you bought the house from, there's probably certain things they didn't take care of, but now you kind of have to take care of it yourself. There's responsibility, even in relationships. There are responsibilities. Because a lot of people love the idea of being in a relationship with someone, being in a, whether it's friends with benefits or whatever. But you don't really understand the responsibility, what it is to be in one, because you like the idea, but you don't understand what the what the what the aspects of it is. Because let's say you're in a friends with benefits relationship, and let's say you are, you know, whatever your fuck buddies and shit like that. You don't understand the responsibility with that. And what do I mean by that? Well, because you don't know what energy you are feeding yourself. You don't know what energies the other party has been through that she's fed herself. That Because that transmits to each other. So whatever she has of you and you... I mean, she has somebody else, you know, and then you have somebody else. And then that goes into one. Um, biblically speaking, you know, when a husband and a wife joins, two flesh becomes one. You have a oneness now. Which is why I don't understand, like in the porn industry, I don't understand how people could just just fuck freely and just not. It's just weird to me, right? But yeah, I used to be addicted to porn. It's the craziest thing, right? But I'm like, wait, but there's these things, these attachments, the soul ties, the the, and it's not just the mind. It's not just spiritually. Your heart is involved. Your mind is involved. A lot of things you don't get to see again the same. You know, and it's it's interesting. But there are people like 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 in this case in this piece, I warned you a little bit of what, what this is. But I, I'm warning you. I'm telling you. I'm showing you. I'm explaining to you. And whether you take on this, you know. So you gotta understand. You love the idea, but you have to be willing to do whatever it takes to maintain the idea, to go through the idea. I wouldn't rush the process of this. It's crazy because this piece, um, I don't know, this is how that speak, that's how that piece spoke to me. And I love that this piece spoke to me that way. Because it opened up all these cans of topics. So, yeah. So that piece was by Stephanie Lamb Poetry. Stephanie Lamb, and this piece was called Warning Sign. So, I just want to say thank you. Um, it feels good to want to do this and engage. And the next episode will be coming out soon. And with that being said, um, this podcast is available on anchor.fm. Google, Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, and iHeartRadio. And as the time comes, I will be continuing expanding. I'll let you know if I do decide to do YouTube. I just have to see how that would work. But for the most part, um, I just want to say thank you guys for supporting. Um, It might not look like it's much, and I'm okay with that, but... um, I'm just excited. I am honored to read your pieces. And thank you guys for trusting me enough to want to read and to put your word out there. Don't stop talking, writing. Like Keep them coming. So, um, so God bless you. And stay tuned for episode number four. And yeah, take it from there.